Good afternoon, Trailblazers. I'm Alyssa Young with the Vanguard TV. Here is Lauren Johnson with information about the bathroom door situation. Hey, Trailblazers. This is Lauren Johnson with the Vanguard TV. Several students have been inquiring about what's going on with the bathroom doors. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so we removed the exterior bathroom doors in a response to some student safety issues that um, were expressed to us. Uh, we had a lot of students just going into the bathrooms, hang out, going in in large groups and that sometimes is um, results in not making the greatest choices so because student safety is one of our highest priorities we made the decision to remove the exterior bathroom doors for that reason yeah um, we've had some concerns expressed to us regarding the privacy which um, you know privacy is is not an issue because it's the same setup that um, of the restrooms at middle schools and elementary schools where they didn't have exterior doors either. Um, same thing, any sporting venue, um, they don't have exterior doors on the restroom, so um, it doesn't violate any privacy issues there. Regarding the doors coming back, um, the decision to, to bring the doors back has not been made just because, again, we're wanting to stay on top of any um, you know student safety concerns and uh, try to reduce the amount of incidents that occur in the restrooms. Um, some of the restrooms are locked in an effort to be able to monitor the restrooms a little bit more efficiently just because we do not have a full staff yet with us not being a, a full high school. So that is something that we'll look into as we head into next year and we have more staff members that um, can monitor those restrooms and then we can perhaps open those up as well. Um, right now it's really just to, to br provide more monitoring. Hope this answered all your questions and concerns about the situation. With the Vanguard TV, this is Lauren Johnson. Those things, they're everywhere. Those things must be fake. Those birds. Birds, they fly everywhere. They're everywhere in the skies, and they must be fake. In China, they use them to monitor their citizens. There are over 400 billion birds in the world. Heck, you can even buy a robotic bird off of Amazon for 30 to 80 bucks. The potential to know everything about one's population is an insanely powerful tool. Think about it, birds are everyday common things you see everywhere in the world. And it's not uncommon to spy on your population. People have done it with camera equipment, satellites, all types of things. Birds would be the perfect disguise. There's one there. <sighs> Those birds, they ran away. Birds, they have the unique ability to return to their place of origin without any difficulty. Like the pigeon. There are over 400 million pigeons in the world. The Chinese government uses plastic pigeons in the skies to monitor their citizens. It's a perfect disguise. What do you think? Do you think birds are real or not? You can check out my article on lthsvanguard.com. Have a great day, Blazers. Yearbooks will be handed out on May 22nd and 23rd. If you ordered a yearbook, you may pick it up from the concession stand by the gym. Pickup times are 8.30 to 9 before school, during lunch, during passing periods, or 4.15 to 4.30 after school. You must bring your yearbook receipt and picture ID to get your book. Check the glass wall in the main entrance to see if you ordered a yearbook. Still need a yearbook? We have a few extras for sale. Buy one on May 22nd or 23rd, $75 cash only, while supplies last. Hi Trailblazers, this is Julia Lyon with the Vanguard TV. Are you ready kids? Aye, aye, Captain. April 28th is National No SpongeBob Day. Let's see what our students know about the famous sea sponge and his friends. It's another word for backwards or upside down. Uh, what am I doing things in? To Spin around. The, a, a different way than I normally do. Backwards! Oh opposite day! Opposite day! 
The inner machinations of my mind are now an enigma. <laughs> it's a rock. Hey, Patrick Starr. And he's like, it's not a boulder. It's a rock. <laughs> Let's start this off easy. Okay. What's SpongeBob Snail's name? Gary. Oh. Yes. He's got it. Gary. Gary the snail. Oh, he added the snail. Gary. Yeah. Okay. What is SpongeBob's favorite food? Hold on, I know this. No, I don't know this. Hold on, wait. Where does he work? Yeah, he, uh, he works at Krabby Patty. Krabby Patties. Yeah. <laughs> what is SpongeBob's favorite color? <laughs> what? Did they mention this in the show? Yeah. I mean, is it yellow? Beige. That's a color? <laughs> wait, um, what, wait. What color is beige? It's like that, kind of. What kind of color is that? Is SpongeBob a lefty? Or a righty. He writes with both. What's the word for that? I. Uh, it's a really long one that I can't pronounce and I don't know. Starts with an A. Still won't know it. Ends with an N. It's a lefty, isn't he? He's ambidextrous. Ah! <laughs> I knew it. No, I knew it. Freaking. I want to die now. I want to die. What are SpongeBob's three favorite holidays? Uh, I don't know. Christmas, New Year, and Hanukkah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh. Christmas. Is it? Is there like a? Is there like a St. Patrick's Day episode? By no. Any chance? No. Okay. No. Eventually. Opposite day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the Goofy Goober song? Doesn't at this point. I'm a goofy goober, yeah. You're a goofy goober, yeah. We're all goofy goobers, yeah. Goofy, goofy, goofy goober, yeah! <laughs> you know the Krusty Krab pizza song by heart? <laughs> Krusty Krab, yeah, 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 pizza. <laughs> the Krusty Krab pizza is the pizza for you and me. Pizza, pizza. Krusty Krab, yeah, 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 pizza is the pizza, yeah, for you and me. <laughs> Bravo. Your best SpongeBob impression. <clears throat> I gotta get this one. Nah. My voice doesn't go that high. It goes. Nah. Good one, Patrick. Thanks for watching. With the Vanguard TV, this has been Julie Lyon. Hi Trailblazers, this is Mona Lane Santos reporting with the Vanguard TV. As we're approaching the end of the school year, it's time to start preparing for those AP tests that are right around the corner. An AP exam is a cumulative exam of a college subject taught to high school students where they can earn college credit if they score a three or higher on a five-point scale. Um, typically, it's one semester of college spread out over the entire year. Okay, so there's two different start times for AP exams. Some of them start at 8 and some start at noon. So if your exam starts at 8 o'clock, you need to be there at least by 745. If it starts at noon, we're going to make sure that you're there by 1145. Um, so 15 minutes prior to the start. Uh, also, there's a 10 minute break in between the tests. Like you'll have the multiple choice part and then a 10 minute break and then usually the writing section. So if you want to, you can bring a drink or a snack to eat out in the hallway. The only thing you can't do is talk about the test during that time. Make sure that you don't bring your phone in or if you do that you power it down and give it to the teacher. And also it's not a good time to wear your smartwatch because you'll need to give that one up too. Okay, the AP exams, um, if they're smaller exams, they're gonna be given in classrooms, but if they're the large ones, we're gonna mass test like we do EOCs. So like English language, US history, world history, AP human geography will all be in the gym. Um, the advice I would give students taking an AP exam is just to trust your teacher and that you're prepared. Um, you might want to attend any reviews that they give, um, get a good night's sleep, eat breakfast, and then just be confident the day of the test. You've prepared for it all year, so you're ready.
This has been Mona Lane Santos reporting with the Vanguard TV. Thanks for watching. If you have any story or segment ideas, please visit our website at lthsvanguard.com. I'm Alyssa Young with the Vanguard TV.